So I have these two boards and they've been sitting waiting for me for a little while and I even put them into Procreate and I wasn't sure where am I taking these? Where are these two going? And I've had a really rubbish couple of days where I haven't been able to be in here. Um, and so what I've just done to help get myself back in, I had this piece glued on. All it had was this color and this sort of cream and this line drawing. And so I just got out a, um, a little bit of ink, which was these two, the Thello Blue and the raw Burnt Umber. I think raw umber is the ideal in, um, in paint to change the colors, but this is what was available in this big bottle. And I quite love playing with ink. So I put those two together on my little palette here and just proceeded to make a green vase because it made me happy. And then I had took the plain cup and added my favorite magpie that I've got a cup just like that. You would have seen in my work. And I just allowed myself to play because I've been really low and I don't like painting when I'm low. I, I mean, I don't like bringing that to my artwork, but I have to remind myself it's completely welcome and, and a good place to bring it to my journal. Um, and then I got a little bit of blue. I got a little bit of blue, yellow blue, and added that to the blue, to the mix. And added a little brown to it. And it became this quite nice thing. And so as I was just about to start listening to another podcast, I captured, I thought I would capture this moment and um, just share, share with you this little messy way in that I'm just slowly finding my way back into painting after a couple of days of seemingly not being able to. I'd love to talk about that some more actually, because I just wonder how, how often that strikes us. The really wanting to be in our art, but thoughts, feelings, whatever is going on in our life gets in the way and causes that barrier. I'm really curious about that. Hi, I'm Denise Tafara. This is one of my vlogs and it occurred to me that my vlog is called Art Plus Life. So life at the moment has been a little bit odd and so I thought I think I need to just have a chat, a chat piece um, about how my thoughts and feelings often really can invade my painting space and rob me of painting time and I just wonder did that happen to you too sometimes um you know my thoughts and feelings were really in a whirl and and yucky last week sometimes just the overwhelming feeling of making art for sale and then if you have a period of time when hardly anything is selling and it's sort of like selling is a very challenging piece for you um, you know, I might not have updated my website quite properly or whatever. So it's almost like the actions don't line up to support selling with ease. Um, and so then life shows up and, and maybe things don't sell for a while. And the worst thing I can do is make that mean I'm failing, I'm useless, and I should really give this all up. And that's exactly what I thought last week. Um, and then something a little shocking happened to me on Saturday morning when I was shopping at a um, local shopping centre. Um, somebody stole my wallet out of my backpack, my handbag backpack. Um, so, so I went to pay for my fruit and veg after doing my groceries and my wallet was gone. And it put me into a quite a shock. And so, you know, being a bit um, contemplative, into spiritual life etc you often i often use anything that comes along as kind of fodder for what what is the gift in this or what is something i can take from this that's helpful 
because firstly I thought you know I was shocked and upset the idea that someone had taken money out of my or my taken my money taken my whole wallet um but it didn't take long before I kind of thought life is it got to be really desperate and horrible for somebody to do that so it's like I'm not going to waste a lot of time being angry and upset with that person because I think they're obviously in a hell of a worse place than me um I'm in a comfortable home I've got a a lovely husband I'm I'm supported it's just my own thinking and how I want to do better at my sort of art business or whatever that can really drive me crazy and something I wanted to talk about and share was this idea I just read it on a friend's post she was talking about when you've had trauma as a child and then things happen as an adult and you have a way that is sort of comfortable for you um, the fight flight or the other one was freeze and then there's fawn which is sort of a newish one that's been added to those um, so I, I realized that for me it's often to freeze and to shrink and to get smaller and smaller and almost hide and that I think is why I wanted to have this conversation is when I've been in this low state the detrimental result can be that I will sort of stop doing my art stop doing my art business in a way that is in flow and sort of supportive of me and it can just be like a downward spiral and so I don't I don't agree with the whole toxic positivity like everything's rainbows and sunshine all the time um, it's like the ups and downs the dark the light all of it is part of life and I get that and so you know I might say that it was a bit of a dark thing to happen it's my um, my wallet stolen but that isn't my whole life that's not my whole life and so yeah I just sort of um, I thought oftentimes like I've reached out and had a chat with a friend this morning and that was really lovely and I kind of thought look I'm getting a bit annoyed with how sometimes I've been letting the life stuff stop me from then making my videos and doing my vlog and and creating my YouTube which I'm really enjoying I love it I love it when I make connection with people you know when you respond in um, in the comments it really is meaningful to me and I always make sure to read them all and respond to them as soon as I can it's like it's just a small fledgling thing that I'm doing but I love that it's reaching others you know out and beyond because I don't have a physical community around me at the moment of art um, creative people you know old friends whatever I don't have any of that and so this is a way that I am able to connect to other like-minded like-hearted people and I feel like that's what these kind of vlogs attract you know it's not um, high energy sort of like let's make lots of money type vlogs you know like there's all sorts available um, but I just wanted to make something in a way I kind of want to make a vlog that I wish I could access when I'm feeling all my feelings um, you know connecting to people that are real and creativity is your main source of I don't know it's sort of like a healing thing in the world you know um, that's what I've noticed is when I drop off from doing my creativity it's it's usually really um, really hard I miss it a lot and then uh, uh, what that brings up is to contending with that perfectionism as well because I think that comes in and knocks you off your perch sometimes as well that you think I'm not going to create anything decent so why bother you know um, so I feel like I'm starting to ramble now so I think I'll leave it there 
for now and see if I think of some other things to add I will come back but yeah thanks for listening and I'm going to maybe do some things in the journal for now before I attempt this the changes I was thinking of making to this big painting behind me because that's something I feel um, true as well when you're a little bit lower than your um, you know that state when you know you sort of feel more confident to try something new or make a big change on a painting when you're a bit sort of be, be under par um, I feel like best try something that's got no um, weight to it don't you know there's no drama if it it comes out all wrong so it's almost like go make some ugly art on purpose and then regroup um, before I go and challenge this one that's what I'm thinking so yeah thanks for thanks for listening and uh, we'll see what happens next on this one I'm about to do some more on this painting I think and I wanted to check in and have a chat as I do as much with you as with myself so as I'm chatting about things that I'm noticing I sometimes ideas pop in that might not happen if I didn't do this so it's kind of a fun exercise um, what is inspiring me at the moment is I watched some a video this week of Sandy Hester talking about value and I realized I've really got a lot um, to do with value going on here and she spoke about that push and pull bringing some things forward pushing some things back so it's interesting for me to consider what what I'm up to I did have this big um, round shape sort of like it's like a pottery platter clay platter is what it reminds me of it's kind of um, like look a loose shape but as I looked at it I felt like in the, the scheme of things it was just taking up a bit too much space and as far as what I did with the previous one um, of making the fruit platter that I end, ended up actually repainting nearly everything I thought I don't want to do that this time if I can help it so I'm wanting to keep the interesting uh, marks in those pieces of fruit and find my way around how to make the table whether I do a tablecloth in the end I'm not sure I just remember I was really saddened last time at losing all this interesting marks so I'm still wondering about that I've in the dark I've I've picked out three avocado shapes because of that very deep green kind of works and so also with this platter I thought I need to bring that down because I want the fruit to look maybe like it's standing up and just sort of nonchalantly uh, a, a conversation of fruit hanging out some of them are not on the tape on the platter rather than like a bowl of fruit and they're all on top of each other these guys are all kind of a bit separated and I don't know I just feel like they're nonchalantly hanging out which is kind of fun so that's what made me think all right so I've gone too far with the size of that table so I'm going to take that top bit off so now my thoughts are what am I going to do with the background see this this end this side has got a lot of patterning and interesting marks going on on the table whereas this I've kind of lost lost them in favor of letting the leaves be the stars of the show and so um, I've got some kind of um, things going on with the tablecloth on that side that are different to what's happening over here so at this kind of point I feel like I'm sort of maybe leaning towards having to make it a bit more like that side and the thing is is that with this kind of random mark it to me it's almost impossible to recreate it it only happens when you have that real freedom early on in the piece and there's no thought to what it wants to be you just make the movements so it will be 
kind of a challenge in a way if I, if I want to bring that level of looseness back. So that's what's making me really quiet. Um, not wanting to lose it. I've also wondered about creating sort of a pattern, like a deliberate kind of pattern that's meant to be on the tablecloth, like some of this line work and stuff. But yeah, that's my current confusion in a way as to which way to take it. But I do want to keep in mind, what am I bringing forward? What am I taking back? Warmth comes forward, cool goes back, dark, dark comes forward actually, and light goes back. So that's curious because I'm wanting the feeling of that table to go back. I have got just a little portion of a previous one, and I did end up doing dark at the back of that. So you know like what rules are made to be broken not sure <laughs> so anyway that's where i'm at at the moment and i'll see where see where to try it maybe i should try it on my ipad see i'm treading so carefully it's like because i know that i have so much here that i want to keep i do want to tread carefully i'm not wanting to just lose heaps and start again really I just want to edit this to bring it more to life that's what my that's what I'm aware of now as I'm talking to you so yeah I'll, I'll see how we go so this is where I'm at at the moment friend who's listening to this raving on this is what I did on the iPad and I used the brush for the white um, called oil paint and see how that looks kind of swishy and interesting and there's kind of texture involved and so then this is what it's come up with what I've come up with so far and I wanted to have a look with you and let you know that I feel a little sick inside it's like oh god what have I done? It's that feeling of I've lost all the interesting marks because I've made a choice. Um, so yeah, I feel really quite uncomfortable. I've tried to do this dark tears framing and bringing us in here. And now I feel, okay, let me see what I think. What do I love and what what do I feel is not working? What I'm wondering about is the fact that there's so little marks in this corner. I liked the idea like that I feel like there was a bit of a gradation going on. There's sort of moody colour fading, fading, fading to quite bright. I'm not sure if that's still working or working in the way that I'd like it to. I could do a bit of a glaze over this table. I could abandon ship and give it a whole, like a tablecloth. I was thinking like a white tablecloth with a blue check, blue line sort of thing. I had one of those drawn up in my iPad. Um, and as I'm looking, it's like one of the techniques to look back at a painting and feel like what's working is to make it into quadrants. So you, you, you do quarters and see what's happening in each quarter. So if I do that, that quarter's got quite a lot going on. That quarter's got a lot going on. That quarter has a lot. And then there's this quarter, which is sort of like, uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened? This one's become very empty in comparison to the rest. Some could say that's like a resting space, but I feel like it might need something. Might need something there. And so before I did have, but it was like random marks. And this is the thing, is that the more I have like added that fruit in a thing, it's like against all wishes, it's become more controlled. There is looseness in the marks inside 
the shapes of the fruits. I also love outlines, like I'm not upset about outlines. I actually really love them. So they're not everybody's cup of tea, but I love, you know, drawing the loose lines with ink and stuff. So that's okay. That's me. I'm kind of happy. But I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do you want painting? What do you want? I'm even wondering if those two um, pairs now are, is there's too much. Because you see what I did? I actually created that vine coming out of that arrangement so that I could keep a bunch of those marks. That That's often what, <laughs> like that's a way. I, I thought I will keep these yummy, interesting marks inside leaf shapes, which is what I've got going everywhere else there. So there's a lot of that going on, like I've talked to you before. There's a lot of a similar thing going on. There's a lot of sort of transparent paint with texture in behind. So that's what's making up a lot of this painting. So to be honest, I am a little bit stumped and I think I better leave it alone because I think I'm running the risk of just going stuff it and painting that all white and doing a tablecloth and then I might, I'll love it or hate it, but I think it's really interesting. I'm just feeling into what's my level of confidence. I feel like there is such a thing as beginning, middle, end type energy. The, and the, the beginning doesn't really matter. You can just play and go for it. But when you come to a stage where you're wanting to finish, it's like you even need more confidence. More confidence to know clarity of what does this painting want. Um... It, like it's close but it's not quite there so I don't know I could talk about this for ages but I think I'll leave it there as I just keep feeling into what's next it's like there's like that very uncomfortable half panic what am I going to do what have I done have I ruined it um, so yeah that's what's happening at the moment Hello again. So, I spent some time yesterday on the iPad having a look at this, had a chat with my lovely friend Nancy in Adelaide, and there's going to go through a whole lot more changes. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just do part one and part two. 
So I'll send uh, this one off into the YouTubes today. And thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing and your comments. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to showing you what happens next because it's something that I've not done a lot of, the whole still life and adding shadows. So um, that'll be interesting. All right, see ya. I'm releasing this little series. I did these in the time that after we moved down to Sydney. So toward, uh, I don't know, the end of last year sometime. I've been holding on to them for months because they just meant so much to me. Um, but I thought I'll offer them for sale and I'd like to sell them as a series. And the series I've called, She Moved to Sydney. <laughs> um, so if you would like a little series of three very sweet paintings, just get in touch. I can send them anywhere in the world. They're really quite small and they'll be lightweight. So that's not a problem. <laughs>